La route est dure, la vie est morne, mon âme est sûre d'aucune bonne. Que dois-je faire avec ma vie quand toute la terre How I hate the summer. No, no, my dear, I, I don't like that a bit. Overstated, don't you think? And, and naively so. He seems to have assumed the Christ figure. <laughs> The Dark Angel. <laughs> One suspects he couldn't really have been serious. <laughs> yes. Altogether too literally. You know, I don't care much for Gauguin when he tries to think. The real <laughs> Gauguin is the decorator. Please forgive me. What for? What happened on the way here? Oh, that? I've forgotten all about it. She doesn't want me. And now I look at things. I don't want her. How did I come to kiss her then? She's so limp. Quite the opposite from Marcel. Marcel is all woman. Huge thighs. Plump. Yeah, she'd be even plumper if I don't organize things soon. Oh, forget Marcel for a minute, will you? He's good looking, isn't he? Oh? He has an air of distinction. Arrogance, perhaps? <laughs> quite. Why do you say quite like that? Well, one would expect you to call it arrogance. You French hate anything noble. Why are we French? You were born here, weren't you? Only just. But for the revolution, she'd have been born in Moscow. A daughter of the aristocracy, presented at court, probably married by now to some fine, upstanding guards officer with a narrow forehead and an empty face. I'm a letdown for her. French, middle class, with a dislike of things aristocratic. Not her type at all. He turned his back on France, didn't he? What? Go there. You like me to tell you his life story? Well, I know that he was married with children, but that didn't prevent his clearing up. He worked in a bank. On Sundays, he wandered off into the suburbs with his paint box and his easel. He was a Sunday painter. A Sunday painter? An amateur who messed about with colours and canvases. <laughs> Why so funny? Are there Sunday writers, too? You mean me? My bits of writing. Well, perhaps I'll be like Gauguin. I get all up and clear off to Tahiti one of these days. You? I doubt it. Oh, well, people do make the break sometimes. Gauguin remained a clerk till he was 40. There can't be many clerks like him. Well, look at his face. He's lost. You mean I am not lost? Certainly not. You think that's a fault? Hmm? I ought to be lost. Well, let's drop it. You think I should be lost? It's a word, that's all. I'd like to know what you meant. Look, some people are lost and some people are not lost. As far as I'm concerned, it makes no odds. You're settled, stable. You couldn't change. How do you know? It's the impression you give, set in your ways, your ideas. Am I? Too intelligent to take risks, let's say. So, if you tell me you aren't like that, No, I'm like that, I'm just like that. Oh. You despise me for it? On the contrary, I approve. With you, there's a sense of security. Never any fear of the unexpected. Thank you. Mm. I'm meeting my brother at the Dama Gola later this afternoon. Would you like to join us? I'm sorry, I've uh, another appointment. Oh. I've got to tell you, 
My brother suggested we might all go to the Sumatra Club tonight. Well, that's where Lola's singing. That's right. We'll make up a foursome. Well, the trouble is, I don't think she likes me very much. She loathes you. But what does that matter? Well, all four of us sitting round the table. It's a little embarrassing. Well, we'll be drinking and dancing, I hope. Besides, I want you there, and Boris wants you there, so to hell with Lola. Well, I'll think about it. Is that what I'm to tell Boris? Yes. Yeah. You won't like it. You're staying away because of his woman. Now, don't you suggest to Boris that I've got anything against Lola, will you? As a matter of fact, I find her very warm, sympathetic. Well, isn't that just like you? The moment people dislike you, you must do your best to discover virtues in them. I find Lola quite unreal. No? Always playing a part, usually a very desperate one. How can she be desperate when she has all that money? Money doesn't stop her from getting old. True. One oughtn't ever to get old. You're right. It isn't very pleasant. You enjoyed the pictures? Are you ready, my darlings? I want you to leap out and claw my face to pieces if you feel like it. I deserve it. Revenge is sweet, is it not? Right. That's the best you can do. Aren't you going to punish me? Pity. Oh, my darling, you've got a naughty master, haven't you? A naughty, naughty master. You'll never forgive me, will you? Oh, dear, somebody to interrupt us. Mathieu, my dear child, come in. Come in. Oh, Poppy is feeling poorly. Malvina must have clawed her. It really is too bad of her. I was taking them a little walk to my sisters. I really thought they would have behaved in there, but they didn't. Excuse me, will you? Put the basket behind the chair, will you, my dear fellow? It rather frightens them. Flesh wounds can turn awfully nasty, can't they? Oh, forgive me, my dear Joe, I won't keep you a minute. I've known you a long time, Danielle. There's no need to cast your velvet eyes on me. <laughs> velvet eyes? Velvet eyes, indeed. He's sticking labels on me as if I was some object up for sale. <laughs> there. Marcel is pregnant. Pregnant? I'm in a mess. Yes, you must be. Control yourself. You mustn't laugh. Think of your dear mother's death. Yes, yes, that's better. She's shocked by it. She feels humiliated and degraded. Well, it can hardly be any better for you, dear chap. Whatever your deeper feelings, she must seem rather off-putting at the moment. I no longer feel any love for her. You don't? Have you told her? No, of course I haven't. I'll see her through this business first. I've found a doctor, a gynecologist who'll do the job he wants. 4,000 francs. 4,000? Will you help me? I could pay you back half at the end of the month, the other half on July the 14th when I get my cheque for the long vacation. 4,000 francs? My dear fellow, I simply haven't got it. But didn't you tell me the other day... Oh, yes, I know. I thought I'd be rolling in it by now. But you know what the stock exchange is. Shares have tumbled. I'm in debt. You can't manage it. I'm awfully sorry, my dear chap. I'm afraid I can't. What about your brother? I wanted to avoid asking Jacques. Oh, but he must realize that this is an emergency. Well, that's a trouble. I can't tell him what it's for. Ah, yes, of course. Actually, I'm rather glad I haven't got the money. What? A thought's just struck me. You're always going on about your search for freedom, aren't you? Well, here's your opportunity. I don't, um... No, haven't you said that to be free means acting against your own nature, if need be? Well? Well, then proclaim your freedom by marrying Marcel. You're not serious? Certainly I am. You have it in your power to change your whole life. Marry her as a supreme act of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm not falling for that. Mm, but what an amusing experience, Mathieu. Mm. To do the exact opposite of what one wants to do, one would have the feeling of being somebody else. Oh, yeah. Very nice. I father a whole load of brats for the sole privilege of feeling like somebody else. Anybody can change by giving up and giving in. Ah, but to give up entirely, that would be something. To be an utter washout? 
Absolutely done for. Finished. Marriage can do that to a man, so I'm told. Mm. I'd rather ask my brother for the money, thank you. Nice see you. Well, if I do happen to come into the money in the next few no, weeks, I'll be sure about it, too. Uncle. Find it somehow. Bye then, yeah. Goodbye, my dear Chu. Four of these, only four, and his trouble would have been over. But why shouldn't he have troubles? He's always so balanced and composed. He should have troubles. It'd be worth a fortune if he were forced to marry Marcel. Why are you staring? Just wondering what you're thinking about. Nothing? Impossible. One's always thinking about something. Well, I was thinking about nothing. You're always wandering off into a dream world lately. It's a means of getting away from me. Isn't it, Boris? You're fed up with me. No, I'm never fed up. <laughs> That's not the answer I wanted. I don't lie. You should try it sometime. Lie? Yeah. You sleep with me? You'd like it. A few lies now and then could be reassuring. But you'd know they were lies. I'm in love. I'd believe anything. Mathieu once told oh, me that I'm he, sick of that he about and Mathieu. his woman were absolutely truthful with each other. <laughs> Mathieu's real. Mathieu's real. Look, Lola, I've had teachers galore, but Mathieu's the first one who practices what he preaches. Oops. No, he doesn't preach. He uh, communicates his own set of values. And what are these great values? Well, he doesn't lie to start with. He's a with, bloody saint. Neither to himself nor to other people. <laughs> oh, all right, Lola, yes. <laughs> he's envied because he's independent. Independent? I'm the one who's independent. He's safe and secure, and he has a teacher's salary with a pension at the end of it. I live from day to day. Trouble is... I'm in love with you. And you're not in love with me. No. Don't say anything. You just make matters worse. I'm deeply fond of you, Lola. That isn't love. Well, perhaps it's better than love. Mathieu said no, love... No, damn, it. Mathieu. Is this my visit? Your visit? You promised me one. Ah, I wish it were. No, I'm afraid I have to see Jacques. There's something I want him to do for me. Oh, come now. You're not in such a hurry as all that. Jacques won't run away. Sit down. I warn you, one of these days I shall be very angry with you. I have a right to my visit. How are you, Adele? Very well. That's, uh, that's a very nice frock you're wearing. Oh, come now, leave my frock out of it. Every time you see me, you talk about my frocks. I prefer to hear what you've been doing this week. It's, um, it's something I think I ought to tell you. Heavens, what is it? I was wondering whether you shouldn't wear earrings with him. Earrings? What, you think that a trifle common? Not at all. Only they give the face a rather forward look. So I think if I did wear them, you'd certainly be more at ease with me. But it's wrong of me to keep you. You seem to have something on your mind. So run along then, run along and see Jacques. All right, Look, I'll, uh, I'll see you again before I go. Ah, Mathieu, come in. Good morning, Mathieu. How are things? Good morning, Jacques. Well, what brings you here? Ah. Something wrong? Here, take a chair. 
Care for a whiskey? Yeah, whiskey would go down very well. How about drinking the whiskey and clearing off without saying a word? No, it's, it's too late. He already guesses I've come for a loan. You simply think I haven't the courage to ask for it. After all, a good gin fizz is a better drink for the hot weather, don't you think? I've come to touch you for money, you know that, don't you? No, I didn't know that. Well, how should I know that? Do you mean to insinuate this is the sole object of your visits? I don't mean to insinuate anything. I need 4,000 francs by tomorrow. 4,000? Well, well, well. I find you amusing, my dear Thier. Amusing and instructive. You know, when I consider you, Mathieu, I'm more convinced than ever that one oughtn't to be a man of principles. <laughs> You're chock-a-block with them. You invent them, but you don't stick to them. Now, I, as a simple empirical middle-class man, living without principles and ideals, can't help wondering how you find the nerve to take anything from a bloody bourgeois. <laughs> I mean, that's what I am. A bloody bourgeois! <laughs> Yes, and what's worse, you despise the smug security of family ties, yet you're only too prepared to exploit those family ties when you're short of cash. You wouldn't dream of coming to me if I weren't your brother. All this doesn't bore you, I hope. No, 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 I find it most illuminating. No. I'm right, you know. If you stop being so high-minded and got down to a bit of ordinary day-to-day -day organization of your life, ah, but you couldn't reject your principles, could you? Oh, I don't know. The rejection of principles is in itself a principle. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from you, I don't much like the sound of that. He's weakening. He's talked himself to a standstill. Now he's in the mood to hand it over. My luck's in. Matthew. Yes. Has something sudden turned up? Hmm? Well, uh, when you called to see me last week, there was no question of your needing money then. Yeah, well, something uh, cropped up yesterday. 4,000 francs? It's not the usual small sum to tide you over till the end of the month, is it? I'm not, of course, asking you any questions. I'll tell him it's the income tax. No, wait, he knows I've paid it. Nothing for it. Here goes. Marcel is pregnant. Oh, when's the wedding? We've decided to have an abortion. Have you found a doctor? Yes. And why do you want the money by tomorrow? Because the doctor leaves for America by the end of the week. Right. Yes, understood. And uh, you're quite sure that abortion is in accordance with your principles? Why not? Well, I don't know. It's for you to say. You are a pacifist. You uh, respect human life. And now you're going to destroy a life. I may be a pacifist, but I don't respect human life. Oh, indeed. I thought... Uh, Yes, well, uh, all the same, here you are in the guise of a child killer. It doesn't suit you at all, my dear Tia. Abortion is not infanticide. True, abortion is not infanticide. It is uh, metaphysical murder. Now, I have nothing against metaphysical murder more than against any other perfect crime. But that you should commit a metaphysical murder, you being what you are, aren't you ashamed? I'm ashamed. Why? Because you're such a baby. Oh, I love to hear you say that word. It suits your voice. Mm -hmm. you, you know the number you sing? Yes, I, I must have your I love, baby. Your love. It's marvellous. You should have seen me years ago. There was only one name on the bill mm, then. Lola Montero. And I held them, just me, all night. But you've made your mark, Lola. Mm. Yes, you're part of our mythology. Oops. But it's true. You stop anybody you meet in the street and ask them, who is Lola Montero? And they'll say, boy, <laughs> yes, for me, for, for people my age, you're a legend. You bastard. <laughs> you're a great boost for me. Every part of you. You know that, don't you? I've told you I have a deep affection. Yeah. I hate this lousy job. They're the worst audiences I've ever known. Afternoon, Lola. Ah, Ivich. I uh, hear you're coming to see me tonight. 
I'm looking forward to it. Incidentally, Mathieu isn't sure if he can make it. Hmm? Mathieu? I didn't know we'd invited Mathieu. No, well, I simply thought that he could accompany a bitch, that's mm. all. I have to collect some clothes from the cleaners. You always have to collect clothes from the cleaners. Certainly. In my work, I sweat. Or didn't you know that? Bye bye, you. Bye, Nola. <laughs> She does stress her age, doesn't she? Well, she does it as a challenge. Do you really prefer older women? Well, they're reliable. When they love, they love. And young girls don't. Well, they play at it. Does she still dope? Mm. She's loaded with it. With a thrill? No, no, no thrill. Just simply to relax. Oh, God. When you get to that stage, you must be old. Yeah, what's wrong with Mathieu? He just said that he had doubts about joining us this evening. Well, he knows that Lola isn't very fond of him. Well, Lola will have to get to like him. That is, if she wants to keep on with me. Given Mathieu and Lola, you choose Mathieu? Of course. Are you basically queer? Are you basically less? <laughs> no, I couldn't sleep with a man. But there's only one Mathieu. My dear, dear brother. You're lying to yourself, and I prefer not to be a party to it. This coming child is the logical result of a situation which you entered of your own free will, and you wish to suppress it because you haven't the courage to follow up the consequences of your own acts. The plain truth is that your whole life is founded upon a lie. How interesting. Do go on. You see, what you're trying to hide from yourself is the fact that you are a bourgeois. Hmm. You are bourgeois in your tastes, you are bourgeois in your habits, and you are bourgeois in your temperament. Indeed. What could be more bourgeois than your relationship with Marcel? Hmm? It's the same as any ordinary bourgeois marriage. Except for one thing, you refuse to take on your full responsibilities. I prefer to retain my freedom. Oh, well, I should have thought myself that freedom consisted in confronting the situations one has deliberately chosen to enter and acting upon them. No, but not you. Yours isn't freedom at all. It's simply, well, pulling faces while sitting on the fence. You condemn our capitalist society, yet you remain a civil servant. You're a communist sympathiser, but you don't join them. And as for Marcel, you keep her for years in a humiliating position, simply because you haven't the courage to do the decent thing. It's all freedom from, not freedom for. That isn't freedom at all. You hide behind your principles as a cowardly means of escaping from life. Yeah, well, No, no, thank... no, please, please, let, let me finish. I worry about you. You're a grown man. You've reached the age of reason. Yes, but there's a thing, too. You can't accept maturity. You try to be younger than you are. All the same, I'd like to be fair on you. The age of reason, my dear Mathieu, is the achievement of full moral health, order and responsibility. Yes, perhaps I've got there sooner than you have. Another? Well, I'm not bringing your youth up against you. He's away now. He's going to tell me about his bohemian youth, his years of fashionable dissipation. But he managed to reform all right. He found his moral health when he married a dowry of 600,000 francs. <laughs> he bought a lawyer's practice. Dribbling them away. Indeed, you still haven't finished the process. The result is you're still an irresponsible student, a bohemian. It doesn't suit you at all. Your hair's receding, you're no longer young. You have attained the age of reason, my dear Mathieu. You have attained the age of reason. Or you should have done. The age of reason, yes. Not the age of resignation. Listen, I'm going to make you a proposal. Well, you are my brother, and uh, I want to put you on the right track. I shall not lend you the 4,000 francs, but I'm going to give you 10,000 francs if you agree to marry the lady. Uh, thank you, Zach. You're very kind, but it will not do. Not? I won't say you're wrong all the way along the line. But if ever I do get married, it'll be because I want to. At the moment, it would just be a clumsy effort to get myself out of a mess. Oh, mull it over. Take your time. Your wife would be very welcome here, I needn't tell you that. A debt would be delighted. Think about it. I've thought about it. Well, as you please. When shall we see you next? Um, Sunday, say? Yes, come for lunch. Thanks. And if you change your mind, my offer still holds. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mathieu.
Anything wrong? He said he'd look in on me before he left. How forgetful. Yes, he has things on his mind. What things? Well, personal things. I'm sure they wouldn't interest you. No, I'm sure they wouldn't. It's too early to arrive at Marcel's. I think I shall go for a bit of a walk. Now, now, Daniel, don't lie to yourself. You know what going for a bit of a walk means. You've got that feeling in the blood, haven't you? It started up again. Yes, it's such a warm night. I know, I know, but I need a little distraction. I shan't go to bed with one of them, I swear it. I shall guard against temptation. Besides, I haven't time. Not if I'm seeing myself. Oh, God, with this heat, my soul will stink so. However much women wash, they always smell. The air in her room will be hardly fit to breathe. Why do I see her locked in a room with a woman when it makes me so sick? And now she's pregnant of all horrors. That's a bit of extra torture I didn't bargain for. So, to make things even, I shall go for my bit of a walk. I don't call it a bit of a walk. You're going to the amusement arcade, aren't you? Very well. But I shan't get up to anything. I shall have a little look, that's all. You wouldn't deny your master his little look at those naughty, naughty boys and those dirty old men, now, would you? Forty airplanes circled over the center of the city today and dropped 150 bombs. The exact number of dead and wounded is not yet ascertained. I shall never marry Greta Garbo, says Tchaikovsky. Wow. Preparations for the state visit of their majesties, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. The entire people of France are... The entire people of France are shit. Yes. Gomez wrote that. A letter from Madrid. Over 50 dead and 300 wounded have already been counted. Now, there are thousands of people reading that now and shouting out, you bastards. Where's my anger? What's wrong with me? You bastard fascists have done it. No, your anger's false, empty, inert. But you can't force emotions, can you? To be out there fighting, that would be freedom, wouldn't it? Fight till the death. No, for you it'd be an escape. You don't fight seeking your own death. That's an indulgence. You fight for people. People matter. She matters. Marcel matters. Or does she? Well, if you really feel compassion, phone her. You should have done hours ago. Right. Is that you? Yes, darling. Well? Well, I went to that address you gave me last night. It's absolutely impossible, dear, so you can count it out. All right, now what? Well, I've found someone else through Sarah, some, someone very good. How much? 4,000 francs. How much? 4,000. Oh, it's impossible. I'll have to go to no, the... No, you won't. I'll borrow it. Who from? Jacques? Well, Jacques refuses. I had a session with him midday. Have you asked your friend, Danielle? I went to see him. Well? He says he's broke, a bloody liar. He's loaded with money. You didn't tell him what it was for? No. Sure? Of course not. Well, where will you get the money, then? Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it somehow. Well, get it. Get it. Marcel? Marcel, are you all right? Perfectly. You're not too... Uh... I'm at the end of my tether. Do the best you can, won't you? Mathieu? 
I'll bring you the 4,000 francs tomorrow evening. I, I do love you, you know. No, I don't think he's a homo. He's coming here by chance. Ah, the Narcissus type. He enjoys touching himself. Most alluring type of all is that I joy. Dear God, let him win the electric torch, please. The last of his money. He hasn't had a meal since yesterday. So lovely and yet so deprived. He needs me to take care of him. Stop it. Daniela, stop it. Not tonight. I must follow him. I must. The nightmares come again. I have the ache. That all-engulfing melancholy from within. You must resist it. Resist! Oh, God, I am delivered. Here comes my victim. He's corseted, too. Corseted old queen. Now for some fun. Here she comes. What a nauseating piece of bush. Jiggle your buttocks, that's it. How oh, I hate large hips, as bad as female flesh. Yes, the old sod will take him home, bathe him, soap him, and daub him with scent all over. It takes two to play, doesn't it? I tried to get my ball in your gold mouth and you tried to stop me, is that it? You must be at one side, I'm at the other. Shall we play? If you like. He won't come out. Let me show you, please. Oh, that is clever. You must have had a lot of practice. I know the knack, obviously. I'll let you work the knob. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you're so good at it. You score every time. Tell me. Do you come here often? Now for the rites of departure. The gentleman will go first and the boy will join him in two or three minutes. I shall follow them both. I shall tell the old man I am a police detective in charge of offences against morals. I'll take his name and have him shaking with terror. <laughs> I shall feel so exquisitely pure and righteous. Evening, Danny. Hmm? How's tricks? Get away from me. I told you never to approach me. But I want to have a word with you. Oh, God, everything is spoiled. He thinks I'm an old queen like himself. How I hate this Freemasonry of the cottage. I'd rather kill myself than be like you, you old friend of yours. What do you want? I'm in a hurry. You don't sound very pleased to see me. I was attracted to him once because he looked like a cat. I thought you might like to know I moved from where I was. I found a new place. I'm sharing it with Ralph. You know Ralph, in what goes in for all that wrestling. He's a dirty little... Oh, but he speaks well of you, does Ralph. We were only talking about you this morning. I said to him, if Danny only knew how hard up we are at the moment, I'm sure he'd help. How much do you want? If you could lend us a hundred francs. And I do mean lend. Here's fifty, I give it to you. Now get away from me, go on! If you'd like the new address, it's 6 Rue des Gars, 7th floor. Go! Bye. 6 Rue des Gars, 7th floor. Forget it. Forget it. Concentrate on something else. The only way to see Marcel, think about Marcel. And Mathieu. Destroy Mathieu. Make him marry her. He's so aloof, so pure. Well, bring him down! Good. That's better. Ralph's at six through they go. Forget that address. Wipe it from your mind. Mathieu, think only about him. He talks about you behind your back. You must do. You hate him. Let him feel humiliation as you feel it. Let him have loathing for the flesh he sleeps with as you have. Six through they go, seven through. Admit it. 
You'll destroy Mathieu and then visit that address. That's what will happen. Oh, I am a truly evil man. But don't worry about it. Being truly evil can be remarkably satisfying. I simply want to know if he'll be joining us this evening. At the Sumatra? Yes. Does Lola know you've invited me? Yes. Doesn't she mind? Of course she minds. I'd uh, like her to get to know you better. Excuse me. Well, you old fascist hyena, I said I'd look in on you. <laughs> Who's this? Our Brunei, Boris Sigi. Oh, yes, I've heard of you. You're his famous disciple, aren't you? And, and, and Boris doesn't like to be thought of as my disciple. <laughs> Neither would I. He do sit down. Ah, oh, no, not there. Your armchairs are too corrupting. Still working at the philosophy? Oh, I've uh, just taken my finals. Oh, a degree in it, eh? Not yes. bad. You wouldn't think me rude if I were to have Mathieu to myself for a few minutes. Oh, you want me to go? I'll see you this evening. Right, goodbye. I'll join you about 11. Hmm? Yes, till this evening. Did you mind that? Yeah. My getting rid of him like that? Not at all. I don't see you often. Yeah. Pity. Um, we ought to get together more, you know, the three of us. Three? Yeah, you and I and Danielle. Ah, yeah. It's a romance about our student days, eh? Uh-huh. How is Danielle? Do you still see him? We keep in close touch, strange as it may seem. And you, what are you doing with yourself nowadays? Same old thing. Oh, teaching? 14 hours a week and long summer holidays. That's about it. <laughs> and your brother? Still as right wing as ever, is he? He thinks our right wing isn't dynamic enough. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, He'll soon be a fascist. I uh, saw him this morning, as a matter of fact. Mm. He wasn't all that friendly. Oh, why not? He gave me one of his sermons. He wants to alter me. <laughs> Time you were. What? Altered. Oh. <laughs> but not by him, I trust. Look, Mattia, I haven't got much time. I've got a meeting. When I saw you at Sarah's, you looked so washed out. I thought I'd better come and have a word with you. I look washed out, did I? You look bloody awful. Now, what's wrong with you? I'm worried about money, like in the Money? Else. What's money, Matthew? You and I have known each other a long time. Right. You're all tangled up, aren't you? You're living off theories that don't pay. You think so? He's come to help me. Busy as he is, he's put himself out to help. All the same, it would have been better if he'd come simply to see me again. Mathieu, I'll come straight to the point. Will you join the party? Party? I'll take you along now, get it settled straight away. Well, the Communist Party. <laughs> well, you don't think I'm talking about the fascist movement, do you? Well, don't look so suspicious. I'm not a recruiting sergeant. Look, Mathieu, let's get it straight. The party doesn't need you. We've got intellectuals enough. But you need the party. I'm sorry, I'm taken aback. It's very good of you. You, uh, you think I need to join? Well, don't you? You're living in a void, man. You're adrift. You're a nothing. How much fun is it? Not much. You're a real old pal, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You've renounced an easy, smug existence to be free. All right, then, take it one step further. Renounce your freedom and find yourself. Oh, now you're talking like a priest. <laughs> no, seriously, then. It wouldn't be a sacrifice. It'd be an enrichment. I'd discover a whole new world. Real actions, real passions. That's my trouble. I've lost a sense of reality. Nothing seems altogether true. All right, then, what's holding you back? Well, I suppose I am. I've got a lot of commitments at the moment. Well, there's only one commitment with us. It covers all other commitments. Loyalty to the party. As a loyal member, you'd be safe. You wouldn't have any problems. Yes, the private problems of the individual are anathema to you. They must be. Do you enjoy your private problems with the individual? Not much. Well, then. If I were to commit myself, it would be for your side. There is no other choice. But? I need time 
time. There's not much time left, not for any of us. We'll be at war by September. War? The second fortnight in September, the Germans will enter Czechoslovakia. Oh, that's some scaremongering rub. No. Look, Matia, I'll give you till tomorrow morning to think it over. I'll call here, nine o'clock in the morning, on the dot. Agreed? Agreed. More than enough time. Tomorrow. Well, thanks for calling round. I'll see you tomorrow then. Bye. Why couldn't I just say yes and be done with it? I couldn't because I've got my woman pregnant. I've got to sort out my private life first. That's not true. Join the party and they'll tell me how to deal with any problem. Marxism encompasses all, even Marcel, you know that. And what's the difficulty then? Maybe I enjoy my individual problems. Maybe I don't want the ideal world I've believed in. Why? Why? Perhaps it's because I don't want to be like other people. Les mains s'étendent de toutes côtés. Les chiens sont lourdes, puis-je les ôter? Un seul pas contre la tyrannie. Une raison d'être. Forte, mon âme est sûre, la peur est morte. Je sais quoi faire avec la vie quand toute la terre sera. Un...